I know I'm behind schedule, but there was a birthday party and work and family things. But today, well, I kind of ran with my last idea for the previous video that I put out with using a blue dragon's ability to destroy potions and water to come up with a whole adventure idea. Hello everyone, and welcome back down here to the Gamer's Den with me, your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire, requesting that you today please ignore any laundry that you might happen to see in the background there. I promise I am a responsible adult and we are working on it. Uh, today, today we are bringing you, well, I guess it's a quick tips for DMs, but it's just an example of how a whole idea can spiral out and be conjured forth from one other singular smaller idea, namely the trap that I brought up last time using a, a replication of a blue dragon's unique ability to ruin water sources, liquids like potions, water, holy water, and the like. Now, those do allow for uh, uh, saving throws in order to prevent that from happening, but it got me thinking, well, what would a dragon teach that uh, teach that for what would they what would they want to have achieved obviously defensive things are in mind but that just kind of built and spiraled on from there but before we get into all of that if you're new here to the channel go on down there hit the subscribe button and become a regular member here at the gamers Den. or if you've already gone on ahead and listed yourself on such an incredible roster of legendary heroes and go on down there hit the like button and share the video far and wide now let's actually talk about the important thing here today so the uh, this trap that I came up with, you know, replicating a blue dragon's ability, and you know, asking, well, why would they uh, teach that ability? Obviously, it's to help defend their lair and also save the number of uses of their ability that they could apply towards other targets and creatures, having multiple sources for it. But for you as a DM, it's also a way for you to kind of clue the players in that, hey. This is a pretty rare and distinct ability. This, uh, this might be something that's worth looking into, and it affords them an in-game opportunity to kind of research things a little bit more. Now, that does depend on how you have it set up, because if they're already delving deep into the dragon's lair, then they're probably not going to have time to research it and figure that out. They might be afforded a maybe an arcana check to see if they know it off the top of their head. But beyond that, you know, uh, it, there won't be many opportunities for them to head back to the library and go check things out. Not without completely uh, throwing their whole dungeon delving scheme into, into chaos. But for other things that you could do with this, so the idea that I got was just this whole adventure idea. Now, blue dragons like warm climates, equatorial places, but not anything that's highly humid. So no jungle environment. It's not swampy, but desert-like, so they prefer hot, dry, sandy areas. Places with good cave networks that they could burrow their way into, carving their way into different rocky mesas and plateaus, and creating a honeycombing network of, uh, of a lair with big expansions and then a large central core where they can store their loot, their massive bed and hoard of wealth, and have that retained and secreted away from the rest of the eyes of the world. But any good adventure worth their salt uh, is going to have minions for the players to deal with. So that layer is going to have defenses, including traps, magic traps. It, uh, the dragon will have his own own minions and forces, his right and left hand people meant to protect the place. Now, there's dragons tend to be solitary creatures in terms of uh, pairing up with other dragons so it's not going to be another dragon present but probably half dragons or even uh, dragonborn or other kinds of dragon spawn creatures if you want to reach back to 3.5 with the uh, various spawn of uh, Tiamat. Need to see if those made their transition over to 5th edition but uh, I'm digressing from the point there so 
those are going to be very potent, very useful pawns that it's going to have in its back pocket to help protect its lair. And these could very easily be the creatures that it teaches the, these unique abilities to. Now, obviously, they're not full dragons. They're not going to be able to exercise this ability to its fullest of potential like, uh, like it can. But still, it's something else that they can put into their repertoire to make them more effective servants and create better protections for the lair. Not only that, but because they have these humanoid servants now, they can go and gather other creatures as well, uh, installing piercers into the roofs to pose as uh, stalagmites that could drop down and utterly annihilate any wandering adventurers that happen their way through. They can install other traps. They can recruit many other creatures into the fold like some of the aforementioned spawn of Tiamat, or many other creatures. They could even get some wyverns in there, potentially, if they uh, took the time to domesticate's not the right word, but uh, keep them in line through vicious and harsh means. And it doesn't have to stop there either, because a dragon's got a dragon and gather more wealth for its hordes, so eventually... Uh, when it's not sleeping, it may decide that it wants to expand its wealth, increase the size of its horde, and increase its standing, and its presence and terror within the region that it occupies. So, it sends its minions out, it sends its right and left talents out to go and recruit. And they'll go to two different sources. One will be kobolds. Kobolds see themselves as descendants of dragons, inheritors of their power. Well, whether or not they are is entirely up to you, but the point is they'd be willing to utterly devote themselves. And upon finding this new draconic deity, well, for them a deity, they would start to imitate it. So any kobolds that have an inherently blue scaling could very easily have their society change to the point to where blue scaled kobolds have a much higher prestige and standing, whereas those of other colorations are seen as lesser. But the more capable of them are allowed to paint or dye their scales blue to mark their increase in rank. Now, because they weren't born that way, they will inherently have a lesser rank and have to show incredible deference to their uh, blue scaled betters, but you can start to develop a whole rank and file system there of increasing importance within a very simplistic society. And these could be raiders, people who capture different kinds of uh, livestock, the farmers, the shepherds, uh, bringing people and animals back to the dragon's lair for it to gather and feast upon. So it doesn't have to really go and hunt for itself all that much. It can be doted upon properly by those lesser creatures. They're scaled creatures at least, they're not like those other mammals, but these lesser beings are showing due deference and respect by bringing the meals to it. Then the other, uh, the other talent could go out and start recruiting different uh, uh, bandits and raiders to plague the roads along, the, uh, along different trade routes and start har uh, harassing caravans and bringing back whatever precious materials they can. Now, the bandits could still take the uh, non-precious items for themselves to sell, to make use of for themselves, but anything that's valuable gets sent back. And that can also be another clue right there for the players, is that the bandit camps are almost utterly devoid of coin, or at least they don't have as much uh, gold and silver on hand as they should, not for the number of caravans that have been getting hit. And not only that, but it's mainly the more the uh, less precious metal oriented goods, so nothing that's made of gems or gold or silver, platinum, electrum, whatever. All, most of that is gone, or at least it's been bagged up separately, like it's going somewhere else. So I can clue the players in that this tribute is going elsewhere. And same thing for the uh, Kobold Society. The players are going to notice, huh, these blue scaled Kobolds are, seem to be incredibly important. and given that they are constantly chattering and gibbering about some great blue fanged deity, some great dragon from the sky, that can, re well, that could, that would probably very well give it a, give away to the players that maybe we are actually dealing with the dragon, especially if they have those two sources. And that improves if you give them a trap that has this unique ability that annihilates their wa their drinking water and their potions. And this also sets the scene for some dangerous scenarios that are not combat oriented, but skill oriented. 
because if they trip, uh, uh, trip this trap and even a portion of their water supplies are destroyed, you can start calculating out, okay, this is how much they have. These are their rates of dehydration. This is the exhaustion that can accrue. These are the potential negatives that they're looking at. And they could just die of thirst out in the desert if they're not able to make it back to a reliable water source or find one. Now, a spellcaster could take care of that, but even though a spellcaster could take care of that, that's still going to eat up a spell slot, at least a spell slot. And that's a spell slot that's going to be regularly used. Although, the create water spell does create gallons of water per casting and burning one single spell slot isn't necessarily going to be incredibly detrimental to uh, a mid to high level party but if you're going for, with a low to mid level party working your way up to fighting a, an adult blue dragon or an old blue dragon that one spell slot may sting just a bit more because there's still going to be some useful level one spells that maybe they don't want to burn spell slots on. So that may get them to spend some of their hard-earned cash on acquiring scrolls or a, a wand that lets them create water. So all things to keep in mind and all things that can come together there. And this is an example of how having one idea from one particular source can eventually spiral into a larger, greater adventure. But what do you think? Go on down to the comments below and let me know your thoughts. Did you like today's video? Did you dislike it? Let me know your thoughts either way and we'll engage in discussion down below. And as always, if you're new here to the channel, go on down there, hit the subscribe button, and become a regular member here at the Gamer's Den. But with all that said, I've been your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. Thank you all so very much for your time, and you all have yourselves a good night.